Hello friends, once again welcome back to Triple E Tutorial channel. I am Lisha. In this video, we will see an idea about ideal transformers and its characteristics. First, we can discuss about the definition of ideal transformer. Ideal means clearly it is an imaginary transformer. Okay. It is a pure inductor and it has no resistance since it is ideal means there will be no core losses core losses means there will be no eddy current and hysteresis losses and winding losses will be absent in ideal transformer winding losses means i square r losses or copper losses that is commonly found in this windings so Windage losses are absent in ideal transformer and its efficiency is normally considered as 100 percentage. That means 100 percentage of the flux will completely passes through the primary winding and through this core and the net flux completely flows through the secondary windings of the transformer. That means it has no leakage reactants and induced emf in the primary that is e1 will be purely 180 degree out of phase with the applied voltage v1 and the permeability of ideal transformer will be infinity or that will be constant so that the magnetization curve will be linear okay already I discussed with you about the construction of transformer in detail. This is the primary winding. This will be the secondary winding. Normally we apply supply voltage to the primary side of the transformer and the load is connected to the secondary side. Okay, here secondary is kept open. So this is the general idea about the ideal transformer. So now let us discuss about the working of ideal transformer. Ideal transformer is normally works on the principle of normal or practical transformer that is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction or normally it is mutual induction. In this diagram you can see a transformer with the primary winding and secondary winding and supply is AC supply is given to the primary side. So when we apply AC supply to this primary winding, then alternating flux will set up in the primary winding and this alternating flux will then passes through the core. We know that the function of core is to carry or provide the necessary path for the flux. So this core will carry the entire flux produced in the primary winding and this will completely flow through the secondary winding. Here you can see the secondary winding is connected to the limb of this core. So the induced flux in the primary winding will completely flow through the secondary winding. So that an EMF E2 will induce in the secondary side. This is the mutual induction. Okay. When we apply an alternating current to the primary side of the transformer, then EMF even will induce across the primary side. Okay. We know that. So when we apply alternating current to this primary side, then alternating flux will set up in the primary winding. This flux will pass us through this core and this flux will completely flows through this secondary winding due to this an EMF will induce in the secondary winding of the transformer. This is the working principle of transformer. Here it is ideal transformer. Okay. The amount of EMF induced equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. Okay. 
So in the case of an ideal transformer, the output power will be exactly equal to the input power. Let us see the model and the phasor diagram of ideal transformer. Here you can see a practical model of ideal transformer. Let us consider that if the alternating current is normally applied to the primary side of the transformer and the secondary is kept open, when we apply this alternating current to the primary side of the transformer, then what will happen? Alternating flux will induce in the primary winding so that an EMF will induce across this primary winding, right? So the same flux will flow through the core of the transformer. Okay, so this flux will flow through the secondary winding of the transformer also. So due to this, an EMF will induce across the secondary side of the transformer. We know that the applied voltage is alternating one and the current flows through this primary winding will be IM. It is normally considered as magnetizing component of the current that is IM. So due to the flow of this IM or magnetizing component of the current, the flux will sets up in the core and as a result of that, an EMF will induce in the secondary winding of the transformer. Okay, this is the practical theory behind a transformer. Okay, and we know that here you can see the phasor diagram for ideal transformer. We know that V1 is the applied voltage and IM is the current drawn by the transformer. Since the secondary winding is open and we know that the transformer, ideal transformer means the windings are purely inductive. We know that in in the case of a pure inductor, current will lacks the applied voltage by exact 90 degree. So you can see the phasor diagram like here. This angle will be exact 90 degree. V1 will be the voltage applied across the primary winding and IM will be the current through the primary winding. And due to the magnetizing component of the current IM, flux will sets up in the primary winding that is normally represented as phi. Due to the flow of this phi through the core of the transformer, it will also pass through the secondary winding of the transformer so that an EMF will induce in the secondary winding of the transformer also that is represented here as E2. And E2 is same as that of V2. Okay. This will be E2. Okay. This is the practical idea about ideal transformer. And remember that point. One more point. Induced voltage. Here in this case, it will be E1 and E2. Always the induced voltage will be 180 degree out of phase with the applied voltage. Okay. Next, based on this concept, we can think about the transformation ratio that is K. A is equal to V2 divided by V1, which is equal to E2 divided by E1, that is equal to N2 by N1, which is equal to I1 by I2. Here, V2 is the voltage across the secondary winding. V1 is the voltage applied across the primary winding. E2 is the induced voltage across the secondary side. In the case of ideal transformer, this V2, E2 will be same. And E1 will be the EMF induced in the primary winding. N2 is the number of turns in the secondary side and N1 will be the number of turns in the primary winding. I1 will be the current flows through the primary winding and I2 will be the current flows through the secondary side. Okay, transformation ratio means the ratio of the secondary voltage to the primary voltage. And turns ratio means 
V1 by V2, just to reverse the reciprocal of transformation ratio. Okay, now let us discuss about the difference between ideal and practical transformer. In the case of ideal transformer, its efficiency will be 100 percentage. For a practical transformer, its efficiency will be below 100. And in ideal transformer means it has no losses. Here will be losses for practical transformer. It has no I square R or copper losses. For a practical transformer, there will be some practical losses and iron losses. And ohmic resistance of ideal transformer will be considered as zero, but there will be some ohmic resistance in practical transformer. And the leakage reactants drop will be zero for ideal transformer. But for practical transformer, it has some leakage reactants. An ideal transformer means there is no use. Practically, it is not possible to use this ideal transformer. So practical transformers have practical uses. Okay, thank you.